How would you like if your PDC operator had a small screen in front of him where he could always see the selected camera? So whenever he changes the camera, camera two, camera one, he would see the picture from that camera on the screen. Assuming that all these cameras go into a video switcher like, um, it could be something as simple as this Atom Television Studio HD thingy, then it has an auxiliary output. And if we connect that auxiliary output to such a small screen and being able to change the auxiliary output from the controller, we would have achieved our goal. And that's what we will be looking at in this video. Now, I was too lazy to actually connect the cameras and so on. So um, I assume that you understand what I mean. I have the ATEM Television Studio software on my screen and the auxiliary one output is currently selected by a menu in the software. And you wouldn't like a pan tilt zoom operator to sit and change, oh, camera two, and then uh, camera two, uh, camera one, and then now I see camera one. So that's really not the way to go, right? You want those buttons to do it right away. Let's get started. This is about modifying configurations on Skyhoy controllers, and that's some of the super powerful thing that you can do. Something that these controllers really are unique about that we can now integrate it with an ATEM switcher, not just cameras. Let's get started. And I will um, just minimize this software. We have the Skyhoy firmware updated. We looked at in basics one and two episodes. We will press online configuration like we did in episode number two. That will bring up the online interface. And this is what where we left off in uh, basics two. So we are going to press the advanced icon in the top. The advanced icon will bring us into the heart of configuring Skyhoy controllers. And we will be adding a device core by pressing this button. Devices, it brings us into this screen. I can select a different device by this menu. I'll be scrolling a little bit, see if we can find ATEM switches right there. Okay, so ATEM switches now added. That's great. Save those settings. I now need to go back to configuration. So I go back here, and here I see my controller. Okay, so I can uh, click any of the buttons for the camera selector. So I'm, I'm clicking camera selector number one. And um, currently wh what I wanna do, I'm just doing something where there are certain things I don't see. So it's a little more clear to you what is actually happening. But this button, camera number one button, has an action called camera select. It selects camera one. Sounds kind of natural, doesn't it? It's, it's actually what we would expect. I'm now holding down the shift key and selecting camera number two. As I do so, you can see that the action for the button name camera number two is camera two. That's what we expected. So the new thing is that we're going to add another action. So not only does it select the camera, it's also changing the auxiliary on the ATEM switcher. We press the plus icon to do this. So we can now see that there is a list of actions related to Panasonic cameras, but the ones we are interested in are those related to Blackmagic's ATEM switcher. So we will pick auxiliary output, and assuming that this camera, camera number one is on input number one, on the ATEM switcher, we select one. And we can now do the same for camera number two. So we scroll, find auxiliary output, select this is gonna be auxiliary output two when I press this one. So this is all we need to do. I'm now saving those settings. I'm saving those settings. I, I, I just wanna make sure the IP address is right. Yes, okay, the IP addresses are good except the fact that we are actually running a non-DHCP scenario with a static IP address, and I do not like that. Oh, there's something else. We did not set the IP address of the ATEM switcher. We should probably do that. Now, you may remember from the first episode that setting the IP address in this interface means that those settings will be burned into the firmware we are going to upload just in a moment. So now I'm done with my settings, and so I can keep talking while I press the check for updates button as we did in episode number two, so that now it's generating a new firmware. It is including compiling support for ATEM switches into that firmware, uploading it to the controller. It already has the IP settings that are our defaults in our infrastructure. So hopefully when this firmware arrives, everything works out of the box. And that's really exciting. So this is um, what we wanted to cover in this episode, modifying configurations by adding a new 
device call for an ATEM switcher, but keep in mind this could have been a TriCaster, it could have been vMix, it could have been a video router, anything that you wanted to change as those buttons are changed. We're now seeing, seeing the firmware being written, and it's now completing. So as it is completing, it's going to reset automatically. I want to bring up the serial monitor right away so we can follow a little bit on the serial monitor what is happening right now. We should see it's requesting a DHCP address. That's awesome. And oh, there's something else I want to comment. I see that right now. So, oh, and a lot of stuff is outputted. Yeah, we need to scroll up again. Let's just see what happened. Yes, we have an ATEM switcher on this address. We are trying to connect to the ATEM switcher. I don't see if that succeeds yet, but it does find the cameras and it turns out the ATEM switcher has initialized, so everything seems to be working. Now, you don't need to look into the serial monitor if everything is good and it is actually working when you press the buttons, it's good. But um, I just wanted to introduce you to this kind of debug information. And the thing that I saw that I wanted to show you is that uh, there was just this one, it says preset checksum mismatch probably due to updated default configuration, clearing presets and using default config. If you rewind back to episode one, you remember setting an IP address locally on the controller may get overridden when you update with a new firmware. And that's exactly what happened right now. There were, was uh, information stored in the controller that was now incompatible with the new firmware that we uploaded and therefore it had to be reset. But since we set all the IP addresses on the uh, server version, then everything just works out of the box. So that's great. Now, uh, we are so excited to press these buttons, but before we do, I want to bring up the ATEM software again because we need to follow if the auxiliary is actually changing, right? So we now see that it's currently black on auxiliary one. So um, when I press camera number one, it goes to input number one for auxiliary, which is currently named New Tech PTC. And if I press camera number two, it is going to camera two, currently named TriCaster on this ATEM software control. So again, we succeeded. We are now controlling an ATEM switcher and switching cameras with a single button press. Typically, Skahoy, this is why you buy our products, because they are so flexible that they will adapt to almost anything you have in your infrastructure.